While other companies have dabbled in sticking big V8 tests into their compact sports sedans, Mercedes AMG was doing it years before. And it is the only brand that has hung on to the Bent 8 in that segment. We shouldn't be surprised, seeing as AMG made its bones putting 8s into engine bays built for 6s and, more recently, V12s in place of 8s. Just as the rest of the industry has fully embraced downsizing, Mercedes-Benz's in-house hot rod shop is bucking trends by stuffing a V8 into its second from smallest SUV family, which includes the GLC and the GLC Coupe. Do what you know, right? In the case of the GLC 63 and its Coupe variant, AMG brought powered rain parts from two other 63s into the body styles du jour. The twin-turbo 4.0-liter V8 is a direct transplant from the C63 family of sedan, coupe, and convertible. In the standard GLC 63, it churns up 469 horsepower and 479 pounds to foot of torque, the latter in a friendly plateau from 1750 revolutions per minute to 4500 revolutions per minute. Step up to the S model and output rises to 503 horsepower and 516 pounds to foot, a configuration limited on our shores to the coupe body style. We're not sure why German manufacturers insist on labeling such four-door hatchback vehicles as coupes, SUVs like these, also see, BMW X4, look to us more like turtles than sleek two-door conveyances. The other organ donor is the A63S Super Sedan, which contributes its 9-speed automatic transmission and 4MATIC plus all-wheel drive system. A multiplate clutch pack takes the place and role of a torque converter to minimize shift times and powertrain losses, while the clutch pack front axle coupler can deliver as much as 60% of available torque forward. In most scenarios, though, the GLC63 is strongly biased toward rear wheel drive and we definitely felt that on our rain-soaked drive through southern Germany, especially in the GLC 63S coupe, with its rear wheels breaking loose at even modest speed through a switchback, a slide further exaggerated by the country's legal requirement mandating winter tires come October, such tires are notoriously lousy in the wet. GLC 63S buyers get an electronically controlled limited slip rear differential, while non-S models make do with a standard LSD. Dynamic engine mounts also are standard fare. The one thing that doesn't carry over from the E63 is drift mode. If you can't find a flavor you like among the Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and individual settings, then maybe you'd prefer the race mode found only in the coupe which pegs calibrations at maximum aggression for the engine, transmission, suspension, stability control, and all-wheel drive. Comfort mode seemed perfectly suited for the conditions during our drive. As we've found with the other GLC variants, particularly the twin-turbo V6 power GLC 43 in both its coupe and standard configurations, there is more DNA from the C-class cars than the G-class utility. The GLC 63 drives and behaves much like a car, and is basically the closest we will ever get in this country to a C63 wagon, and it should prove quite popular for that reason alone. Those itching for a small, V8-powered SUV will have to wait a few months. The three GLC 63 models don't go on sale until the second quarter of 2018. Official pricing, too, must wait. But we suspect this 63's price will mimic other similar upcharges in the Mercedes portfolio. Expect $70,000 to start, with the GLC 63S coupe topping the range with a base price of about $82,000. In case you are wondering, all the advanced safety technology you can throw at a car will be available here, too. To us, until level 5 autonomy and reading the times on our morning commute becomes the norm. All this sometimes hands off, automatic braking, steering me to the safest route, electro tomfoolery are mostly fancy parlor tricks. We'll keep control of our cars as long as we can, thank you.
Luckily, the GLC 63 is one for people who actually like to drive.